Hello and welcome to another TR Thursday. Today we're going to talk about force tables and how we can test our programs using those. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone that's watching this uh, at early 2020. Everyone else, ha nice day. Hell, hi, hi, hi. Hello, welcome to my channel. Hi, hi. <clears throat> um, so I have this small little program here that we are going to work with right now. So uh, to get into the concept of force tables, of course, they're way more powerful. You can do way more testing with this, but I show you the uh, general behavior and how to work with them. The bigger picture is then with real machines. Of course, I can't do that here in a little 10 minute video. I've got this little push button here, right? This little push button. And if I press it, you see it. The LED turns on. <laughs> the funny thing is it's a green LED, so basically it makes me see through because I'm using this green screen effect, right? <laughs> Pretty funny, but we can see it in our program. If I press the push button, the LED turns on. That's what it is. This is our program. That could, of course, the program would be much, much bigger in reality, but that's how it is. <clears throat> yeah. Um, uh, we are going to use a force table. There's watch tables and there's force tables. You can find watch and force tables in your PLC and then in watch and force tables. Those things um, are different. I, the next video will be about uh, watch tables and I'll make a third video about the differences between those two. Um, because there are some, but now we're just going to focus on force tables. So the force table is already there. There's always just one force table per PLC. I can open it and there we have a force table. Looks like a, a tag table, looks like an Excel list. It looks like an Excel list. What we can do here is we can add variables using the name or the address. Of course, both is possible. I have created some. I have created the LED, which is an output 1.0. I have a push button, which is input 1.0. And I have a memory just for show, which is M0.0. Doesn't really matter. So if I take my LED output, put it in here. There it is. It's my LED output. And what the first thing we see here is pretty strange. It is LED colon. Is it colon? Like those two dots, those two dots, double point. Uh, double point um, and P. It's the same with the address Q 1.0 double point P. This double point P, I can also not delete it. If I try, it won't let me. This is because our uh, force table, talking about force tables, not about watch tables, force table directly accesses the PLC peripherals P. The peripheral input, peripheral output, meaning it goes, you're reading your inputs, then you have your program and then you're writing your outputs. During the program, so in between, you are working not with the peripherals, you're actually working with the tags, with the symbols, with the variables. That's during the program. At the beginning of the program, what happens here right on the top is it goes from the peripherals. So from the hardware side, 24 volts gets transferred and is put into the tag table. So in the beginning, we're translating from the peripherals into tags, into variables. So what the force table does, it actually works with the peripherals directly. It doesn't, it will influence, of course, the tag table because it influences the peripherals, which are one level higher. So we are working directly with the input peripherals and also with the output peripherals in the end. So we are directly accessing the ins and outs of the PLC, not the tags, not the symbols, but the direct outputs, the peripherals. <clears throat> um, it is so, so it is really like I'm pressing the button. Like if I have the input, let's add the input here as well. If I have this push button, I press the push button. The 24 volt reach my PLC, the PLC LED goes on, the input indicator LED goes on, and this is this peripheral input, right? This indicator LED. In the program, in the program, we are then working, transferring this to so-called tags, right? To symbols, tags, variables, and those do not have this double point P anymore. Right. So those are just internal in the PLC, looking into a cabinet, looking into variables, into memory areas. The force table does not look into memory areas. It directly accesses the hardware. It looks. It doesn't look into memory. It directly accesses the hardware. 
So we're not really influencing the program, we're really influencing our hardware with this. If I have something else, a memory, for example, the memory does not exist in the hardware. You cannot connect anything to a memory space. Theoretically, you could, but uh, no one's going to do that microcontroller level. That's definitely microcontroller level. Nothing a PLC guy, an automation engineer will ever touch. Um, so if I have a memory, for example, you see we can also access not the double point P, but the addresses as well. But for inputs, outputs, we access the peripherals. Yeah. <clears throat> so what we can do here, right? Um, so you saw my program, right? I press the button, turns green. Oh, let me zoom in. I press the button, turns green. That's what we have. So this is our program. Let me put that a little bit to the side here so I can toss it in quickly. <clears throat> and this is our force table. Maybe let's put them next to each other. So this is the force table and this is my program right here. A little bit like this. I like it like, like this. Like this is okay. <clears throat> There's still one thing missing like this is perfect. There's still one thing missing I want to show, but that's okay. So I press the button LED turns on. That's pretty simple. And the real physical LED you see turns on as well. Now for testing with watch uh, with force tables, you have to, uh, you don't have to monitor. You can monitor. If I click on monitor, you see the monitor value for the LED and for the push button, they can't be monitored because we're looking at the physical hardware. If you go to advanced settings, the expanded mode, there's this little expanded mode. If you click on this, you can still monitor inputs. Then you're really looking at the input level at the memory table. I do not recommend working with this um, extended columns. We won't touch them here. They're not really, there's not much more you can do. It's just more about monitoring. So no need to do that. <clears throat> so what we can do here is I can, for example, if I have my memory, I can force it to one, right? It's true. You see, I can't do anything here. That's great. That's how it is. Not forcing the memory right here. What we can force are the, so we cannot force memories. That's not what it's used for. We are forcing inputs and outputs for testing. So I'll let me test, toss out the memory here. So I have my push button. So I can in the force value, the force value, this is what I want to put the push button to. Let's start with a zero. I can type in zero, hit enter, will automatically turn false. It's the same zero and false is the same. Uh, I can also type in false if I want to, but I'm way too lazy. I usually type zero. So if I now have this value, I want to force this push button to a zero. As it behaves right now, before I press start, I press the button, turns green. If I now activate my force, it will ask me caution. Uh, do you want to, fort, uh, to start forcing now? Yes, I want to. I know what I'm doing. And now if I press the button, Nothing happens anymore. You see nothing turns green because this one here right now, you see it here. This one is being forced. This little F indicates, hey, this is right now forced. We can also see this here in our program. You see this F, this push button is being forced. Even if I press it, the physical input is overwritten. It's overwritten by the force table, right? So the force is stronger than my button press here. It's for testing. Of course, it's stronger. <clears throat> I can also type in force value one, which is the same as true. And now again, nothing changed yet. I have to start the force again up here, start the force. I click on it, replace the forcing. Do you want to replace the current job? Yes. There's always warnings because it is, it can be dangerous with the real machinery. And now it's always on. Doesn't matter if I press this, LED is now always on. As you can see, it makes me see through. <laughs> That's kind of nice, actually. <clears throat> yeah. So with this, we can actually turn it on and off. Let's put it to zero again. Here we go. Got it. Can I actually do this? Uh, no, I can't. <clears throat> so the problem that we have right now is that this force is active, right? If I now turn off my PC, I disconnect it. This force is
still active. <laughs> just the LED of my push button, it just came off. It's okay. Uh, it fell down. <clears throat> um, the force is still active, which can, of course, lead to problems because my real program doesn't work anymore. Let's see. Yeah, that's okay. Just the cap com came off. <clears throat> so, I'm, over I'm still overwriting my program. Even if I go offline right now, I will not show it. I could disconnect and everything, but there's nothing you see. Um, the force is still active active which will be a big problem you can see it that the force is active if you're online and looking into the program you see this f that's the first indicator the second indicator you see the f here in the force table that means force is active second indicator third indicator you see it in tr portal very hard to see you would need to zoom in a little bit uh, i don't really want to zoom in here um there's a little f let me try Do you see the little f next to the PLC? So there is this little f here, which means force is active. Right? Force is active. There we see it, this little f. We can, of course, only see it when we're online. If I'm offline, I can't see that. Of course, I can only see it when I'm online. And the last place where you can see it, this is actually where it's the most important place. Now I need to zoom out again. Sorry, I need to do this a little bit and this and that's why i don't like that here the last place where we see it is actually is up here do you see it here when i'm online uh not 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 just yeah when i'm online i can see it in the software i see this maint led for 1500 and for the 1200 the maint the maintenance led will be on on the physical hardware on the physical hardware, I also see this LED is on right now, indicating there is something going on. And if I then look on the PLC, either with the TR portal or on the uh, CPU display, it says force is active, right? Here I see the forces. Here I see something is going on maintenance thingy. And I see, hey, the force is active by looking at that little thing. And then I see here force is active and I can see, hey, force is active for this variable. So I can see where the force is active. Very, very neat. Then it could be that you were not the one that made this force table. Someone forced the variables and you don't actually see what they did, right? You know, hey, maintenance LED is on, force is active. You go online, force is active, but you do not have the variables here. That's why TR Portal has this button. When you're online, it says update all forced operands and values. If I click on this, TR Portal will grab everything that is right now being forced inside the PLC and put it into your list. So I can now see, hey, ah, okay, someone forces this push button. To deactivate this force, we've got three ways. I could turn the PLC power off and on. I cannot put it to stop. I clicked on stop here and click on run again. This will not deactivate the force. The force is still active. You see it. The force is still active. The variable is still being overwritten. You can also not make a memory reset. If I make a standard memory reset, if I make a standard memory reset, now it's resetting. It takes a couple of seconds um, to reboot. Basically, this is restarting the PLC. Restarting the PLC. <clears throat> Come on, turn on. I can see the PLC down there with its LEDs uh, going on. All blinky, 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 blinky. Okay, it restarted. If I go online, I can see the force here. Force is still active, force is still active, force is still active. So that's not a possibility. What we could do is we could make a, a reset, like not just a memory reset, but the um, ur uh, a real reset. Like, how do I do it? How is it called in English? Let me check. No, wrong button, this one here. We could make a uh, yeah, we could make a reset to factory settings. That's one way or a soft reset, whatever. However, that's called doesn't matter with a little switch. You have the little switch, you push it down for two seconds and then you leave it and you push it down again. F soft reset. Ulation. But that's also not the way that you would usually do it. You have it like this. You could turn off the power if I would turn power off real physical 24 volts completely plc off and plc back on the force will be deactivated 
that's one way not, not the best definitely restarting your whole system not the best way um what we could do is we go online we see a force is active we go in here and we can deactivate the force for every variable that we have so i deactivate the force here and i say play button and stop forcing do you want to continue this action yes forcing is deactivated you see maintenance led is off the force uh, icon is, uh, is gone the force icon here is also gone so that's one way of doing it let's activate the forcing here again uh, that's one way of doing it the other way is uh, pressing on top here stops forcing of the selected addresses which will basically stop the whole force so so those are the ways you are working with the force table. If you're using the force table, work with the force table. Um, this is the reason why I don't like it too much because if you activate the force and then something happens to your PC, you're basically screwed. <laughs> That's how it is. You're basically screwed. That's why I don't really like that. But we'll get there when we are talking about the differences between force tables and watch tables. So here we have the force table. Uh, it is for testing. Let me also have the LED here. So I'm looking at my LED again that I dropped. I will have to find the little plastic cap. So if I want to use the forces here, I can say, hey, true this one. And it doesn't matter what's going on in my program right now. If I press the force, the play button here and it says forcing, the LED is on does not matter what's going on in my program. Right now, it still matters if I press the button, right? If I look in my program, button is pressed, button is not pressed, button is pressed, not, button is not pressed. Right now, only this LED is forced. We can see that with the little force icon. I can also force both. I can also say this one is false, but I want to activate the force and I press play on force. Yes, I see both are being forced now the push button is forced and the led now it does not even matter if i press the button and then i realize hey i want to force the push button true force value true press the play button press yes here we go doesn't matter what i press it's always on yeah and again the last if i force this one here false the led the led will be off doesn't matter if I press or not, doesn't matter if the program says it's on, it's just off. I'm overwriting the physical outputs and inputs. Good. Yeah, force tables are a very nice tool. A lot of times you use it for testing, especially when simulating. Um, the last part is re be really, really, really careful when you are working with the physical hardware because you are going around your program, around all safety mechanisms you're not working with those anymore in your program if you have some interlocks or so you're basically going around everything so always be careful when doing that uh, that's why whenever i press those buttons here there is also a warning right because it is dangerous good i hope this helps a little bit the next time we're going to talk about watch tables which i actually prefer over force tables we'll get to that next time i hope you liked the video if you've liked it uh, don't forget to hit like don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in uh, the next video bye bye <laughs>